How's it going everybody? This is Matt D and in this video I'll be talking about what's on my iPhone 6 Plus. Currently my daily driver is a 64 gigabyte iPhone 6 Plus in space gray. As for what kind of case I've got on my 6 Plus, I have a gold Spigen Slim Armor which features a kickstand that's great for consuming media and landscape orientation. The Spigen Slim Armor comes as a rubber case that snugly wraps around my 6 Plus along with a back plate available in various colors providing added protection for the phone. In terms of home screen organization, I have most of my apps organized into numerous folders, although I left the main home screen mostly unchanged since I first got the phone. On the first home screen, I have a folder dedicated to housing several official Apple iOS apps, including Find My Friends, iTunes U, the pre-installed Tips app, Numbers, Pages, Keynote, iPhoto, and a few others. I started shooting my YouTube videos using my 6 Plus while editing them in the iMovie app. Now I'm going to touch on various highlights of the apps that I've downloaded to my iPhone. I have a folder set aside for most Google services like Drive, Hangouts, Chrome, Google Earth, Translate, Maps, etc. While I have a separate folder for YouTube in the YouTube Studio app, which provides all kinds of analytics on my YouTube channel. Next, I've got an Entertainment folder, which consists of media consumption apps like iHeartRadio, Slacker, Spotify, along with Watch ABC and Watch ESPN, which I haven't used much lately. As for games on my iPhone, the first game in my folder is the augmented reality game Ingress by Google's Niantic Labs. If you're not familiar with Ingress, it's a smartphone-based game that you play in the real world. After you first launch the app, you have to join one of two factions, the Enlightened, the Green Team, or the Resistance, the Blue Team. Without going into the elaborate backstory of the game, you have to physically travel to places called portals in your local area, including post offices, churches, parks, historical landmarks, and other notable places. Upon arriving at a portal, you should hack that portal, giving you various items to use in the game. At a neutral portal, you can deploy up to eight resonators to claim that portal for your team. Next, using items called portal keys, you can then link your portal to another friendly portal that you have a key for. The ultimate goal is to link three portals together in the form of a triangle, creating what's called a control field, capturing territory for your faction. Next up, Threes is a really addicting game that involves combining identical numbers. It's like an endless puzzle game, I guess you could say. Moving on, I've got Temple Run 2, Infinity Blade, Need for Speed Most Wanted, and also a multiplayer air combat game called Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy. I've got a handful of cloud apps, banking apps, and some photo editing apps, including Google's Snapseed app. Another app in my photography folder that I use regularly is an app called Photosync. Photosync is an app that allows the user to transfer photos between mobile devices and computers over Wi-Fi using the Photosync mobile app alongside a desktop companion app. It's a very useful tool for quickly offloading photos from my iPhone when I want to free up some storage space on my device. In my productivity folder, I've got Evernote, which is a great app for typing up documents and organizing them into notebooks that you can store in the cloud. Evernote also includes a desktop companion app, so you'll be able to get work done whether you're in the office, at home, or on the go. The next folder I'm going to show you is my News folder. First up is Feedly, which is one of the many apps that emerged after Google shut down its Google Reader service. Feedly allows you to choose from various genres of news content before allowing you to pick specific media outlets for your news stories. Let's move on to another great news app called Haystack. With Haystack, you can stream video news stories from a variety of categories. The app allows you to share news content with your social networks, while Haystack also comes with Chromecast support so you can watch your news stories on your TV over Wi-Fi. I have another news app called Newsbeat, which streams automated audio broadcasts of news topic from your selected sources. The next app in my news folder that I want to talk about is Weather Radio. In the Weather Radio app, you're prompted to select one or more locations for which you want to receive weather alerts and monitor radar activity. You can also choose what types of weather alerts you'd like to receive alerts for. This app has come in handy several times for me. If there's something like a tornado or a thunderstorm warning in your area in the middle of the night, your phone will immediately sound an alert regarding the weather, while also displaying a notification on your screen. When I first downloaded the app, it was priced at $9.99 and does offer in-app purchases as well. I've also got many of the staple social media apps on my phone. Facebook, Facebook Messenger, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google+, Path, 
a video chat app called Glide, Periscope for live streaming, and several others, including Echophone, which is my Twitter app of choice on iOS. One app in this folder that I highly recommend is a walkie-talkie app called Voxer. With Voxer, you can record audio messages that you send to friends you're connected to through the app. The user you're messaging can replay your audio message at any time. Overall, those were the highlights of what apps I have in my iPhone 6 Plus. In the video description below, I'll list out some of the apps that I've talked about in detail. If you want to tell me about any notable app that you use on iOS, leave a comment down below. Again, this is Matt D. Thanks for watching.